everybody on the road to fly. That's a whole lot of darn cars. Testing, testing. Fifty cars. That's crazy. Well, Sabbath peace. <clears throat> it's another opportunity for us to hear and learn the, uh, the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Son. I'm sorry. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In Him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give Him freely as a gift to all who obey Him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, or any, uh, any material thing that we get, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment if we do not repent. With that said, peace to the saints in the room, to my boy. And uh, <clears throat> peace to the saints that are far off. And no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Alright? Alright, repent that they might live. We find ourselves in a 50, what did you say, 150? 150 car crash. Alright? I guarantee you, none of them understand and know that it was going to happen at that point. Right? Did anybody die? I don't know, I don't think that's it. You know what I'm saying? If anybody ended up dying in that, you know what I'm saying? It just happened. All right? We can't plan for a lot of things. That's why Most High God told, tells us today. All right? He said, let today be the day. You know what I'm saying? Kill a whole lot of our time with frivolous things. Right? Things that don't make any, make any sense, doesn't matter. Ends up slowing us down. Right? Slowing our minds down, taking us off of the focus of the one thing that actually matters. Right? Talking about boycotting the Oscars, you know what I'm saying? All the stuff that these, these people are talking about, how they try to, you know, all this Black Lives Matter and all that. Ain't nothing worse than a Christian to say Black Lives Matter. Y'all sure was black. You tell them that, it don't matter. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And they killed him too. All right? The Romans killed him. But, uh, let's go ahead and open up to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. <clears throat> It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Oh, it's falling out of sync more. I'll have to fix it. I don't know what happened to it. It needs to be perfect. That is like what it is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is what you're going to be doing in two minutes. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. That which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. All right, he said, you're saved if you keep it in memory. That's a condition, right? If it's a conditional uh, word. Right, and it presents to us a condition. He said, if you keep it in memory, right, you're saved, unless. Go ahead. Unless you have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also preached, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. He said, Christ died, Yahushua, the Mashiach, right, Messiah. He died for our sins, according to. The scripture. Let's hear what else. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. He said he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. Alright. These are all things that were in the scriptures. Alright. They testify to him. Now we didn't notice. Right. We read right over this stuff and a lot of things. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19. We read over a lot of these things and we see them. And it doesn't mean much to us until he reveals it to us, right? And that's why he says it's according to the scripture, right? He had to reveal the, the truth of the word, the understanding of the word, in order for us to have that understanding and it be given to us, right? And then we can go back and we read and we see, oh, this testified to Yahushua. 
right, once it's opened up to us by a spirit. This is Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month, the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Egypt. The same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. Keep going, you go. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mountain. Mm -hmm. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called him out of the mountain saying, Thus sayest thou, say to the house of Jacob. Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob. And tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. He said he bore them on eagles' wings, right? And brought them to himself. All right, let's see. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. He said you're going to be a peculiar treasure, a special treasure above all people. Right? Did he say above all people? Yeah. He said above all people. It said that's what, he would, that's what we would be to him. Who is he talking to right now? Moses. Moses. And who is, it, who is Moses delivering this message to? Israel. Yisrael, right? So he said you will be above all people, a peculiar treasure above all people. Let's see, it's this Bible. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. He said we'll be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, right? A set-apart nation. All right, so these are, are some of the promises that, that uh, Yah gave us, right? Right from the start, right? When we first began the covenant, right? Or right before we began the covenant. Let's see. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before the faces, before their faces, all these words which the Lord commanded him. Mm -hmm. And all the people answered together and said, "All that the Lord has spoken, we will do." Mm -hmm. so that's where that's where he got us, right? We got kind of happy. Oh, peculiar people, special kings and priests. You know, everything you tell us to do, we'll do it, right? Because we wanted that, right? That was all. Oh, that that sounds nice. We just came out of Egypt. We had nothing in Egypt. He brought us out to promise us all this good milk and honey. Milk and honey? Oh, yeah, we'll do whatever you tell us to do. Right? Got us right there. Right? Keep going. And Moses returned the word of the people unto the Lord. All right, so he went back and told them. They said they'll do whatever you, whatever you tell them to do. They said they'll do it. Right? Let's see what the Most High said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. He said he come unto us where? In a thick cloud. In a thick cloud. That the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. He said that the people might hear when I speak with thee and believe thee how long? Forever. Who are they believing then? Who are they believing forever? Yahushua. Yahushua? Or who, who he most, the Most High just speak to? Moses. So who are they believing forever? Moses. Moses, right? Let's go. We gonna, let's hear from y'all, sure. We're going to hold what we got there. This is John chapter 5. I think this is what I want. John chapter 5. I need the last verse. I need to know what number the last verse is. It's probably like 40 something. Maybe 50. 47. Give me, uh, give me, uh, 39. First the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Mm -hmm. I receive not honor from men. And I'm sorry, this is John chapter 5, verse 39. We're going into 38. I mean, I'm sorry, 40. 40. Yeah. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Mm -hmm. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye not... ye have not the love of God in you. Mm -hmm. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Yeah, all these people come in their own name. You got the book of what? Mormon. Mormon is a man's name. Right? They say there was a prophet named Mormon. And they call themselves what? Mormon. Right? They don't call themselves, at least the Jehovah's Witnesses, they can, they can call themselves after what they think God's name is. Right? What they was taught God, the God's name is. At least they tried. Right? But not the Mormons. The Mormons are going to name themselves after a so-called prophet of God, right? All right, so that's what happened. He said, he said, he said, search the scriptures, right? He said, I come in my own name, but somebody else come in their own name, you're going to take them, right? You're going to take them right over me. Keep going. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Mm -hmm. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. 
There's one that accuses you, even Moses. He said, trust. he said, don't think I'm going to be the one accusing you to the father. He said, it's already one that accuses you to the father. And it's Moses, right? And you trust Moses. All right? He said, you trust him. That's your boy. All right? Let's see. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. He said, had you done what? For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. So now we see what 19 talking about in Exodus, right? Exodus 19. Where do we leave off? Exodus 19, verse 9. Let's see what it's talking about. It's Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee. And believe thee forever. He said, I come to you in a thick cloud. Remember that. I come to you in a thick cloud so that the people will believe you forever. That's why Yahushua came back. He said, if y'all believe Moses, y'all believe me. All right? The people didn't believe Moses forever. They thought they did, though. They thought they trusted him. But he, they didn't believe Moses forever. So let's see. Keep going. Keep that in mind, though. How did he come to him? In a thick cloud, right? Keep that thick cloud in mind. <clears throat> and Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Mm -hmm. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of the people upon Mount Sinai. Third day, what was going to happen? He's going to come down in the sight of the people. The people are going to see the man on the third day. Right? That's Yahushua. Right, on the third day he rose and we saw him. Right? So that's Yahushua. All these things testified of him. Right? All these things are what we look at and we see that these things represent him. Right? They testify of him. Right? It's little hints and let us know that this thing is real when it actually plays out. Right? It's the little things like this that we can see and we can show, oh no, nah, the New Testament is not made up. Right? You got a lot of Hebrews nowadays that reject the New Testament. Just because they, you know, they, they get caught up in, in all these different things, but they don't see the truth of the word. And the only reason you can reject the New Testament, because you didn't believe Moses. Now, that's the only thing you do. You didn't believe Moses, right? Since you didn't believe Moses, how are you going to believe Yahushua? It wouldn't make sense, right? You have to believe Moses first, right? Let's go ahead and pick up. Last week, we as uh, in Luke 9, we uh, talked about how, how Yahushua, um, uh, was, uh, what they call the transfiguration, but Yahushua, he showed them the kingdom of God. He said it, it, it'd be some here that won't even taste death until they see the kingdom of God. A couple of days later, he went up and he showed himself as uh, in his glorified state. Right? And then Moses and Elijah, we talked a lot about Moses last week. And we saw Moses and Elijah um, were standing with him. And Peter was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Let me make three tents for each of y'all. Right? So we're going to look at that same event from uh, Matthew. Point of view. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1. This is going to be from Matthew's point of view. And after six days, Jesus talked, talked to Peter, talked with Peter, James, and John, his brother. Oh, God. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, mm -hmm. and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. Mm -hmm. And behold, there appeared, appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Mm -hmm. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Mm -hmm. While he yet spake, behold, a cloud, a, a bright what? cloud. A what happened? A bright cloud. A bright cloud. Overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So what does that sound like? We looked at Moses, right? We saw Moses and the Most High God said to him, he said, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to speak to you in a thick cloud. And when I do that, they're going to believe you forever. Right. The reason why I'm doing it is so that they'll believe you forever. So now Yahushua, he just took a couple people. He said, come on up here, Peter, James, John, come on up here. Let me show you something. Right. Most High God spoke to him in the bright cloud. Right. And the reason was 
because he wanted them to believe him forever, right? And that's what that's what the meaning was. All right, keep going. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must come first? All right, so that thing threw them off, right? So they was looking like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, the scribes are teaching us that Elijah has to come first, right? Why do they say that, right? They just saw Elijah and Moses. So it's like, so why do the scribes say that Elijah has to come first? Let's see how Yahushua try to break it down for them. Matter of fact, hold on, we got, let's, let's, let's try to take a look at what they're talking about when they say Elijah must come first. We're going to go to um, Malachi. This is Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. And then after that, we're going to come back to uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse what? Verse 10. This is uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. You're in chapter 5 in Malachi? No, right? For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Mm -hmm. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Mm -hmm. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go, go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Mm -hmm. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Remember ye the law of Moses. My he said, servant. "Remember what? Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant." So who was who was there when when Yahushua showed himself glorified to the people when his face shined? Moses and Elijah. He said, "Moses and Elijah." So now you have. He said, "Remember ye who?" Moses, uh, my servant. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him. And Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So I wonder why he asked us to remember Moses in the law, right before he told us that he's gonna send us Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, right? But this, he said, since he said he's gonna send a, send Elijah before the great and dreadful day, this is why the scribes taught that Elijah must come first. Right. So when they saw Yahushua in his glorified form, they were looking like, whoa, so why did everybody say Elijah has to come first? Right. Right. So they feeling like, oh, it's about to be over. So what do you know what I'm saying? What they talking about? Elijah must come first. So now let's go back to Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. And let's see. Uh, let's see how Yahushua responded to it. Let's see how he broke it down and explained it to our people. Oh, no, I didn't. Why are you getting that? I'll tag the people. No, I'll tag the people afterwards. It's been too long. Speaking of tagging, we all should be sharing it after we tag. I didn't do it this time. We need to be sharing it so we get this word out. All right? It's uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse uh, 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must come first? Mm hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come first and restore all things. He said, Elijah truly shall come first. Did he say he truly did come first? He said he truly shall, will, right? Future tense. He said truly shall come first. That's important. All right, keep going. But I say unto you that Elijah has come already and they knew him not. Right? And then after that, after saying that he will in the future come, he said, but I'll also tell you, that Elijah has come already, and they knew him not. So Elijah was already there, and they didn't know who he was. Let's see what Yahushua was talking about. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Mm -hmm. Likewise, that means they done unto him whatever they wanted, right? Keep going. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Mm -hmm. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. He said the disciples looked at him and it's like, oh, he's talking about John the Baptist. And it shouldn't have been hard for them to understand, right? If we go to the 11th chapter of Matthew, he, uh, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. Mm 
You give me a little bit of motion. Yeah, hopefully it's not that deep, bro. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? The mm -hmm. reed shaking with the wind? Mm -hmm. But what went ye out for to see? Mm -hmm. A man clothed in soft raiment? Mm -hmm. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, and I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Mm -hmm. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy, thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Right, so he just quoted scripture again. Right? Remember before, the scribes was like, well, they say Elijah will come. So we went back to the scripture in Malachi to see what they were talking about. Now, Yahushua said, this is of he, it was written and he quoted scripture. So let's go back to that scripture. Let's hold what we got there. What's that? Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. We're going to come back to that right now. Let's go ahead and go to Isaiah 40, verse 1. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. This is important. All right, he asked him, he said, well, so what did you, what did y'all go out to the desert to see? All right, what was y'all trying to see out there We're in the, in the nothingness? You know what I'm saying? You're trying to see somebody in some nice clothes? You can see somebody in nice clothes in the palaces. Right? He said, John the Baptist? Oh, man, let me tell you, he is more than a prophet. Right? This is the one who was written of in Isaiah chapter 40. Right? Let's read it. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Mm -hmm. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare, war, warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Mm -hmm. For she shall receive of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Mm -hmm. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Mm -hmm. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. Mm -hmm. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and the flesh shall see it together. Mm -hmm. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? Mm -hmm. All flesh is grass, and all of the goodliness, goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the Spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Mm -hmm. Surely the people is grass. All right, so he called all the people grass. Right, he told us that everything that was crooked was gonna made straight, be made straight. Right, the valleys that were low, they're gonna be made high. Right, he's gonna smooth everything out. Right, before the day of the coming of the Lord. Right, he said all flesh would see him. Right, the revealing of the Lord, he said all flesh would see him. That's talking about Yahushua. Right, and that's what this process is that we are in now. Right, everything is gonna be made flat. The people that are high are gonna come down low. The people that are low are gonna come down high. Right, so everybody gonna be made flat. And then at that point, that's when Yahushua is going to come and finish the job. Right? Right? But that's what, that's what John the Baptist was supposed to do. Make everything straight. He prepared the way for Yahushua. Right? And he came in the spirit of Elijah. Right? So you're going to have the same thing happen again. You're going to have Elijah come, and he's going to make and prepare for Yahushua to come. Right? And that's something that we have to be prepared for. That's what the prophecy is saying. That's why, that's why Yahushua said, oh, he truly shall come. But let me tell you, he already came. And any time Yahushua comes, somebody has to prepare the way. That's why John the Baptist had to fulfill the role of, of uh, Elijah. Because Yahushua came in the flesh. Right? So according to scripture, well, Yah if Yahushua comes, somebody got to clear that way. So John the Baptist had to clear the way according to the prophecy of Elijah. So now when he come again, then Elijah still has to come and clear the way according to the prophecy. Right? A lot of these things just have to happen and, and be fulfilled. Right? Uh, let's go back to uh, Matthew. Is Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm in Mark. You in Mark? Yep. Mm -hmm. I think the people said they can't hear you. Testing one, two. 
I wonder why. I don't know, but I press a button now. Nah, right, look. My scanner, everything look right. Let me test the sound real quick. You there, though? Uh, yep. All right, hold on. Let me let me test the sound real quick. Go ahead. Testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. There is something going on. Who are they need? Uh, Nathan. Nathan, right here? No. Yeah. Uh. Testing, testing. All right, so are we at Matthew chapter 11, verse 10? It's Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater, a greater than John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So it says a greater, just saying a man greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Mm -hmm. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. For all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John. All right, so all the prophets in the law, they prophesied unto John, right? And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. Right, and then he said, if you will receive it, this is Elijah, right? Who, which is for to come, right? So Yahushua already told him who John the Baptist was. So that's why when they was on the mount and he told him, well, yeah, Elijah shall come. But at the same time, Elijah was already here and they did they did whatever they wanted with him. And that's why they are people and they looked at it. Peter is looking like, oh, he talking about John the Baptist. That's how they got able to call, catch on because he already told him in verse, I mean, chapter 11. Right, he had already given that information, so they were able to be like, oh yeah, right, and catch right on to it. Go to um, 2 Kings, all right, let's see why it makes a little bit of sense. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. All right, we read a little bit about Elijah last week, um, or not last week, the week before last. So let's see if we can catch up on some of, some of our Elijah information here. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went to Elisha from Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord lives, and as thy soul lives, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy, from thy head today? Mm -hmm. And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Right, so Elisha was looking like, uh, all right, Yeah, I already know it. I already know that my master going to be taken from me today. Right, but he ain't trying to think about it, right? Hold your peace. I ain't trying to listen to that. All right, let's see what happens. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. Mm -hmm. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as my and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Mm -hmm. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? Mm -hmm. And he answered, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. Mm -hmm. And he said, As the Lord lives, and as thy soul lives, 
I will not leave thee. Right? Elijah was like, no, nah, I'm not going to miss this. I mean, Elisha was like, I'm not going to miss this, right? Elijah was like, man, just go ahead and wait here, man. I got some stuff I got to take care of. Elijah was like, no, 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 no. I need to, I need to go ahead and be next to you, right? That's his master. He loved him, right? He didn't want to, he didn't want to leave him, right? So let's see what happens. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. Mm -hmm. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, mm -hmm. so that they too went over on dry ground. Uh, who else did something like that? Moses. Moses, right? Moses. Let's see what else. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Mm -hmm. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. All right. So we saw that. So we saw Elijah was taken up, right? He was taken up by God. He didn't die. Right? The Most High God took him up into heaven, right? With a chariot, right? A fire, all right? And a whirlwind, right? That's the way that he took him up. But we see Elijah didn't die. All right? It's a key point. That's why Elijah is, is, is going to be a key player in the end, right? Because the Most High God took him up to bring him back, right? The prophecy said that he had come back and he said he's going to come and he's going to be able to guide the people to, to the Most High God, all right? Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 5. Let's see if, any, if we have anything else, right? We also have Enoch, right? That's what we're about to look at. It's Enoch chapter, uh, Enoch. <laughs> this is uh, Genesis chapter 5. We're going to read about Enoch, verse And Mahalalel lived after he begot Jared 830 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalel were 890 and five years and he died. And Jared lived 162 years and he begot Enoch. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begot sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begot Methuselah. Mm -hmm. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah three hundred years and begot sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty and five years. So and he, Enoch, well, he lived three hundred and how, how long? Three hundred and sixty and five years. Three hundred sixty-five years, right? And Enoch walked with God, mm -hmm. and he was not, for God took him. All right. After that, the Most High God took him. All right. So he was walking with God, and then he said, after that, Most High God took him. He just was not, right? He was no longer, right? So that's the first person that the Most High God took without him actually dying, right? And the Most High God took him, and he did a similar act and a similar miracle with uh, Elijah, right? But there's something interesting about Moses, though, right? Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 34. That's a good point. We have to talk about that too. All right, it's Deuteronomy chapter uh, 34, verse one. And he said, "He said we we gonna read it. Uh, I think it's right here uh, where he said, uh, you know, what I'm saying that he, he, he was still he's still good, right? Still good when he died. All right, so this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse one. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab into the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and Naphtali, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea. Mm -hmm. And the south, from the plain of the valley of Jericho, and the city of the palm trees unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land in which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. Mm -hmm. saying, I will give it to thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over to it. Mm -hmm. 
right? He said, but you are not going to go over it, right? And the reason we told that is because we read it, we read it last week, I think, um, about him. He, he struck. Let's go ahead and read it again. This is Numbers chapter 20. All right? It won't hurt. Let's read it again. All right? Because he said, uh, Paul told us in the when we first started, Paul told us that if we keep these things in memory, right, we are saved. Right, and if we read in Peter, he said that's why he, he said that's why you know I'm saying to repeat myself, it's not tedious for me. I'm paraphrasing, right? He said it's not tedious me for to repeat myself, but it's safe for us, right? For us, it's safe, right? You keep on repeating, saying the same thing, that's fine, right? For us, because it's going to give us memory, right? And once we have memory of it, he said that's how that's the way that we end up being saved by it, because we believe it, right? We do it, and we remember what we actually messing with, right? What we actually believe in. A lot of people forget. Right? A lot of people forget, a lot of people, you know, leave their they church or they leave whatever they do. And it don't matter to them anymore when they start living their life, right? You start, you go to work and all these things, all this stuff go out the window, right? We read this thing, we say we believe it, talk about how good God is to us. And then that stuff go out the window when it's time to treat somebody, the, 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 the people that we run into in our life or the people, our friends or our loved ones, or our husbands, our wives, whoever it is, when it's time to actually put it into action, it goes right out the window. Right, and the Most High God, he he's gonna he's gonna frown on our life. Right, it's no way around it. Right, it's no way for us. It has to be something that stays in memory. Right, that we constantly think about. Okay, this is what the Most High expects from me. This is what I have to do. Right, if it's not that real to us, then we we gonna fail. Right, that's the only way around it. All right, keep going. This is uh, what are we looking at? This is Numbers chapter twenty, verse seven. All right. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Mm -hmm. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? He said, Must we fetch you water out of this rock? All right, let's see. And Moses lift up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And mm -hmm. the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. All right, he didn't hollow them. All right, he didn't sanctify them. He didn't set them apart. All right, he said, we. That's not setting God apart. All right, you setting them with you. Right, he's putting them in a group. He said he wanted to be set apart, sanctified. Right, he said you didn't set me apart in the in the, in the eyes of Israel. He said therefore you didn't believe me. Right, he didn't believe me. And so after that, keep going. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and He was sanctified in them. Right, and He was sanctified in the people. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter three. Let's see how Moses. This is uh, in the beginning of Deuteronomy. Moses kind of run down every, everything that uh, happened in the wilderness, right? So this is the, this is the piece of what Moses is talking about this event, and he kind of gives his commentary on it. This is Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23. Watch how he describes it. You shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O mm -hmm. Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. Mm -hmm. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah and lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward. And behold, it behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. All right? So you see the most high God wasn't playing over that one event. That one event where he actually did technically what the most high God said to him. But he said you didn't do it right though, because you didn't sanctify me. Right, the commandment that we read, we didn't hear. Make sure you sanctify me in in the eyes of Israel when you hit the rock. We didn't we didn't see that, right? But when the mo when he did it, most High God didn't like how he did it. He was like nah, nah, you know what I'm saying? Technically, you did what I said, but you didn't believe me, 
If you believe me, you would have sanctified me. You wouldn't have been talking about no, we did nothing. You would have said the most high God did this for you. Right? But we get to run in our mouth, right? You know what I'm saying? Get too full of ourselves, get to doing the things that we want to do. Right? The most high God takes issue with that. And we, you know what I'm saying? We've been taught in Christianity for a long time that God doesn't care. And, or, or, they wouldn't say it that way. They would say that it doesn't matter what you do. God loves you the same either way. He wasn't playing with Moses. Like all the things that Moses accomplished, do you think that changed anything? Didn't change. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'm going to show you all how serious God is. These people don't know God. All right? They just don't know him. No way in the world they know him. It's, it's impossible that they would, a lot of this stuff would even come out of these people's mouth if they knew the character of the Most High God. This is Exodus chapter 4. Give Exodus. me, yeah, what did I say before? Yeah. No, yeah, give me Exodus chapter 4. I apologize. It's Exodus chapter 4. Uh, what's the last verse? Mm hmm. Yep, that's exactly what I'm looking for. You know? I think it's 31. So give me like 20, 28. That's too low. Where is that at? 24. It's uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 24. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. No, nah, give me before that. I need about 21. It's uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, either thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. Mm -hmm. But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Right? So this is what the Most High God just got done telling, uh, telling Moses. Right? He said, make sure when you go to Egypt, right, you do all these wonders, right? So let's see what Moses is about to go do. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Mm -hmm. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Right? So Moses is on his way, right? Moses is on his way to go do what the Most High God just told him to do in the verse before. And then, then it said when he was on his way, the Most High God met him and sought to kill Moses. Right? Let's see. Then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. Right? So then she had to circumcise her son. Right? Because Moses, Moses was on his way to dying. Right? We imagine that he might, be, he might have been sick or something because the wife had to go ahead and do the circumcision. So Moses was probably not unable to do it because he was on his way to dying, right? And then what happened? So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. All right. After that, Moses, our God was good. Oh, he got circumcised? Oh, we good now. Moses, you good. Go ahead, Aaron. You go ahead and meet him. All right. That's how serious he got. He just got done. If we read the whole chapter, he, he broke it down. This is what you do. These are the miracles that you use. Let's let's look at the miracles. Uh, give me uh, the beginning of four. Give me four, verse one. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, What is it? What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. Mm -hmm. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Mm -hmm. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Mm -hmm. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. Mm -hmm. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Mm -hmm. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. Mm -hmm. And he put his hand into thy, to his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. All right. He was black. All right. He put his hand in his coat. That thing was white. He pulled it out. That thing was black again. All right. Keep going. And it came to pass, if they would not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign. I wonder what he tell them to do now. If they didn't listen to the first sign, he said, 
they for sure gonna listen to that next one, right? Let's see. But they will believe the voice of the latter sign. All right. It came to pass if they will not believe also these two signs. Uh oh. If they don't believe these two, what's gonna happen? Neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. He said the water will become blood. Keep that one in mind too, right? But that's how serious the Most High God is. At the beginning, he was talking to the man, telling him exactly what he needed to do. And then, just because his kids wasn't circumcised, after he told him all, at any time he could have been like, oh yeah, don't forget to circumcise your kids. Right? Any time he could have told him. He said, no, nah, man, go ahead and do it. Make sure this is what you tell uh, Pharaoh. Go ahead and be on your way. After that, met him and said, boy, I'll kill you. Right? Moses probably had to tell his wife, go ahead and circumcise. Go ahead and circumcise. Wife didn't even want to do it. She was like, man, you're a bloody man to me. Now I got to listen to my kid cry. It's a painful thing. Right? So she, she went ahead and circumcised the kid and threw the stone at him like, man, you're a bloody man to me. Right? You're a bloody man to me. But Moses knew that, that that's what had to be done. Otherwise, he would die. Forget everything that the Most High God just said he'd do. Forget it. We read before how the Most High God, he said, go ahead and get out of my way. I'm going to kill all these people and I'll make a new nation out of you. That's easy for God. He's not, the show is not going to stop with any one of us. He will knock one, any one of us off and replace us with two more people that will do what he want them to do, uh, do what he want, to, want them to do. Right? That's why we need to be the ones that do what he, what he wants us to do. That's why the word is here. It's not, it's not, no, it's not, he not, we're not doing him no favors by obeying him. He's giving us a chance. This is what he's trying to offer us, to obey his word. But he people don't get this stuff. There's a lot of people out here that don't understand the book, don't have anybody to teach it to them, and they will rot, right? It's a lot of these people that God is going to let them all rot, right in hell, right? And that's his choice. That's what he wants. It's fine. He said they didn't, I mean, they wasn't seeking him anyway. He said that's fine, right? But he, he saw fit that us, as undeserving as we may have been in our life, he saw fit that we get this word. We have to be the ones to do what he say. Otherwise, there's nothing for him to replay. It's nothing for us to, for him to tell us all these things and promise us all these things. But if we don't hold up our end of the deal, what you think going to happen? That's law. He told Abraham, if you're not circumcised, you ain't none of, you ain't none of Abraham. You ain't none of a part of the house. So what you think? That didn't apply to Moses just because he had given some commandment to go meet uh, Pharaoh? That's not how it worked with God. Hey, people, let me show you. I mean, let me show y'all about God. I mean, go to, uh, go to uh, 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 Deuteronomy chapter 32. You know, continue on with Moses. It's Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 48. It's Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse People make a mess of it, man. But oh, it doesn't matter what you do. God loves you either way. Don't make a fool out of y'all. They got a pastor out here. A gentleman at my job sat on a jury trial. And he uh he said the pastor said the pastor ended up raping young girls. Alright? They charged him with rape. Right, and probably probably wasn't really right. What it really was was he sitting there counseling them. Right, he's a he's a pastor at a church. They all trust him. He counsel them. He starts you know he, he start messing with the young young women. Right, but they got him on, on charges of this. He had a girlfriend. He had a wife. He had all these different things going on. All these women that went to his church. Right, and he take advantage of them. Stuff is sick. This stuff is absolutely sick. Right. And he sat there and, uh, and uh, the, the, the guy that I work with, he said he was listening to the man and uh, uh, one of his sermons, they had played it. And that was a part of what they had to deliberate on. Right. It's something that they had to have to take into consideration as they uh, as they, you know, gave, you know, and rendered the judgment of what would happen to him. Right? And so they would listen to the sermon. He was like the whole time. It's a Christian, too. Right? It's a Christian. Talk. The whole time he didn't call one Bible verse. Right? He didn't read he didn't read one time out of the Bible. Right? And the thing is, this Christian, I mean his pastor probably about the same way. He probably don't do too much reading out of the Bible either. But you notice that stuff when something bad happens, right? When you see you see a pastor raping and touching and molesting girls, 
our boys or whatever these pastors are doing nowadays, you notice it. Like, oh, they didn't even read out of the Bible. I should have known. Right? But it's a lot of these people. Almost as offensive as I take that. I take it if, even if a pastor don't molest anybody. Let's say you don't molest nobody. Let's say you 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 help your congregation out. You give them you give them money. You know what I'm saying? You help pay their bills when they need it. Let's say you do all that, but you don't call no verses out of the Bible. That's still offensive to me. Right? It's still offensive. What are you doing? So you help people out. If you raping them and all that, all that's bad too. But at least we get a sign that you ain't worth nothing. Right? The rest of them is it's harder to get a sign of it. We just have to rely on you not teaching me the word. And that means I have to know the word to know that you're not teaching me. Right? That's work. In a way. Right? But these are the things that we look at all these. Man, a lot of these pastors just crooked, low down, and dirty. Right? They don't have nothing holding them. Nothing. No, no plan of righteousness. That's why I try to make sure that we understand. Make sure we learn the word. Even if you've got a crooked pastor and he, and he teaching you the word, it, learn the word. Right? Then you would know, oh, he's crooked. Right? Because it's going to shoot him in the foot. No matter what. It's going to shoot him in the foot. As long as we learn the word. Whatever you do. And all thy getting. Right? Make sure we get an understanding of this word. That's the only thing we're here for. Get an understanding of the word and then obey it. And if you understand it, you're going to obey it. Right? If we're not obeying it, it's because there's something in there we didn't get. Right? Something didn't touch us. Something didn't hit us. Right? That's what's important for us. It's Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse, uh, verse 48. Let's hear more about Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain of Byron, unto Mount Nebo. Why? Right, let me show y'all God. Which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession. I right, remember in, in chapter 3. He told him, don't you even bring it up no more. Moses was like, man, just let me, let me just go across there. God, I know, I know, I know, but let me just go. God said, don't you, don't even bring it up. Hey, I'll let you see it. Don't you bring it up no more. That's our God, our loving God. God is love, right? He said, our loving God. That's what he said. He said, you better not even bring it up again. Right? This is our God, right? This is, uh, keep going. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession, mm -hmm. and die in the mount. Where thou goest up and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Or and was gathered unto his people. All right, he said, just go ahead and die over there, just like your brother. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, just right, like your right, brother right. died. Right? Like, imagine that. Give me one of those uh, nine volts. Now, imagine that. Let me uh, let me take this thing off real quick. Huh? Mm hmm. Still saying, look. Nah, give me another one. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, he told him. He said, just go on right over there and just die. How you, how you just tell somebody to go over somewhere and die? Right. But that's our God. That's what type of God he is. This stuff, these fairy tales that we've been taught and these things is they, they try to pacify it. Right. They try to hide us. They try to hide the true most high from us. Right. And try to give us the rosy picture of it. Right. Because they can't handle the true God. It's not something. Do you understand when this man spoke, when he spoke to us that we 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 begged Moses? We said, man, you just go hear from him. that's God. That's our God. That's him. Right? He didn't change. Nothing changed with it. Yeah, like, God spoke to you, you know, he ain't heard nothing from God. If you heard it from God, you would change your life. Right? But we don't change. And the reason why we don't change is because we haven't heard from God. And he's not going to speak to us. Because if he was going to speak to us, he would have spoke to the people, the rest of the commandments. Right? But we asked. We messed that up. Right? We told him. He was like, no, no, no. You sent Moses. So he changed the whole way he deal with us now. We always going to hear it from a prophet. Right? That's what Moses was. Same thing. Look, look, go to um, Numbers 12. Right? Look at his, look at his brothers. And this, this is how Aaron, Aaron and his sister, uh, Moses' sister, uh, uh, Miriam. Right? Moses was getting the word. He spoke with Moses. Right? Look how God deals with us. 
Just tell me if you think this changed. This is Numbers chapter 12. We getting that too. We'll get it all. We'll work our way there. We got a whole lot of stuff we got to get to before we get to the New Testament. Yeah, you know they're going to say, that's why I got it. I'll build it up for them. I'll build my case. You know what I'm saying? We're starting the Old Testament. I'm going to show you ain't nothing changed. This is, uh, is Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. So he had married an Ethiopian woman. All right. Moses got him a nice dark skinned thing. You know what I'm saying? They looking at him like, she ain't Hebrew. All right? She's blocker than we are. You know what I'm saying? We don't play that stuff. Yeah, she ain't Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? What you doing? You know what I'm saying? What you doing marrying an Ethiopian for? All right? That's, a, that's somebody else. That's, that's, that's somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That's one of them Africans. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got nothing to do with us. Right? We looking like, no, nah, we don't play that stuff. Right? Let's see what happened, though. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Right, so they start doubting the man. It's like, you got to you do an Ethiopian woman? He's like, are you sure the, Mo, the, the most high God is only speaking by Moses? I mean, I mean, I'm thinking that, you know what I'm saying, maybe the God, I mean, because God speaks to me and he speaks to you. But I think he's giving me something, I mean, with my personal walk and then you with your personal walk. So they question him, like, you, you think he only speak to you? Let's see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Have, have he not spoken also by us? Right? He said, what the, you know what I'm saying? We hear from God, too. Right? God speaks to us, too. All right? Let's see what God said, though. And the Lord heard it. Yep. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron. And unto Miriam, come out ye three unto the tabernacle of congregation. He said, get y'all butt out of here. He said, go and get y'all butt out here into the tabernacle of the congregation. Watch how he talks to these people. And they three came out. It's, I mean, it's just pure logic, right? Pure logic. He didn't go sprinkling no voodoo on them, no, no tinker bells and all that. That's, no uh, fairy dust, none of that stuff. It's not no riddles, no, 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 none of that stuff. Look, just pure logic is how he speak to them. Watch this. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my word. Mm -hmm. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. He said, Y'all prophets, right? Y'all two prophets. Y'all hear from me? It's a vision or a dream, right? If there be a prophet among you, I speak to him in a vision or a dream, right? This is how he's addressing what just happened. Right. He didn't say nothing about a wife. He didn't say nothing about um, if God speaks to Moses only. You don't see him answering any of those questions. He just came to him and started telling him a story. It's a prophet among you. Right. I'm going to speak to him either in a vision or a dream. Let's see what he's saying next. My servant Moses is not so. He said, well, Moses, that's not the case. Right. Any prophet come to you. A prophet is special. Right. That's what he's trying to let him know. A prophet is special. Oh, we all are a prophet. I mean, you high ranking among the society. He said, and then when I speak to him, it's through a vision or a dream. But that's not the case with Moses, right? Let's see. My servant Moses is not so, mm -hmm. who is faithful in all my house. Mm -hmm. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. He said, I speak to him apparently, clearly, right? I'm not telling him no riddle, nothing like that. He said, even, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. What else? In the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Right, and he can see a figure of you. He said, the similitude of the Lord, what? Shall he behold. He said, did he behold it? Shall he behold. He used to behold it? Shall he behold. He's seen it before? Shall he behold. Shall he behold it. When do you think he beheld it? Matthew chapter 17. We hold what we got here. Matthew chapter 17. He said, the similitude of the Lord, he, he used to behold, shall he behold, future, future tense. He said, he will behold the, the, the similitude of the Lord. Let's see. What's the similitude? It's a likeness, right? It's Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, give me about verse uh, 
Let me move up verse, uh, verse 7. Let me ask you for that. Four. Okay, it's Matthew chapter 17, verse 4. Alright, this is Matthew chapter 17, verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Uh oh, they're talking with who? Talking with Yahushua, Moses and Elijah. Alright? Moses and Elijah was talking, all three of them just talking. That's when Moses saw his image. Alright? That's why Yahushua in the uh, 16th chapter, 17th chapter of John, he said, Philip, have I been so long with you? Right? If you see me, you've seen the Father. Alright? That's why the, that's why Yah, when he is speaking to Moses back in chapter 12, let's go back to Exodus chapter 12. Numbers. Numbers, I'm sorry. Numbers chapter 12. Alright? That's when he is speaking to him, he told him. Oh, and he's gonna uh, he's gonna see my similitude. Right? He shall see my similitude. Alright? The similitude of the Lord, he said. All right, keep going. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even mm -hmm. apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Mm -hmm. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So he said, with all that information I just gave you, I, I mean, let's just establish some facts. Fact, if there's a prophet, I'm going to speak to him in a dream or in a vision. All right, fact, with Moses, I don't speak to him that way. I speak to him mouth to mouth like we just face to face chopping it up apparently clearly speak it right to him exactly what I'm trying to say. I say it. I don't know dark speeches. He said and the man gets to see my likeness. None of y'all get to see that. Right. So he said with all that information all these facts that we looked over. Why is it that y'all wasn't afraid to speak against this man. Obviously he got a better gift than y'all got. Why is it that y'all didn't have no respect for that. Right. Keep going. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he, and he departed. Mm -hmm. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Look, he, he, got, he, he got Miriam and hit her with leprous, white as snow. Right? Look at her. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Mm -hmm. and, Aaron, and Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Mm -hmm. Let it not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Yeah, they thought she had leprosy. Right? He hit her with the left. Who else did he hit with leprosy? We just read it. Moses, right? Moses, he put his hand inside a jacket. It turned leprous, white as snow. Right? It said the same thing, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? But when that happens, right, according to the priest, and who's right there? Priest, right? Aaron. Aaron with the priest. He's standing right there. When that happens, what he got to do according to the law? What did we read a couple weeks ago? He got uh, to pronounce a clean and unclean. But what happens first? And what happens after that? It'll tell us. Let's see. We're missing one step. Keep going. Is it uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse uh, 13? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, heal, heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. All right, he said, oh, please, God, heal my sister. Right? I beseech thee. What does the most high God say? This is our God that's about to speak. Right? Our loving God is love, too. All right? Don't get it mistaken. This is all love that he's doing. Watch this. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her, if her father had but spit in her face. She he said, if her, I mean, even if her father spit in her face, what would happen? Should she not be ashamed seven days? She would be ashamed for seven days. Even if her father just spit in her face. Right? She would be ashamed seven days. Right? Keep going. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received again. That's according to the law. Right. Right? That's law. That's if, you, if, there, if anything changed on your skin that looked like it might be leprous, or the priest got to put you away for seven days. And then after that, if he looked and you be clean, then you clean. Right. But if that spot spread or if it boils, then you have leprosy. You're unclean. You got to stay outside the camp. So she didn't really have leprosy. You're just saying, I'm going to hit her with this. And according to the law, you know what you got to do with her. It's just a punishment. He says, he says it's the same thing. If her, if her pop spit in her face. Right. She'd be ashamed. Right. It'd be a punishment. Like, I can't believe my dad did that to me. 
he be the same for at least seven days. He's like, well, you know what I'm saying? Counting is the same thing. I'm daddy. I'm her father. Right? Why he didn't get Aaron? Because Aaron's a high priest. Right? I told you, that's how God works. I need him. Right? That's it. I need him. Right? He didn't, don't worry about it, though. If we go back, let's go back to uh, Numbers 20. We see what happened to Aaron, too. Ain't nothing changed. All right, numbers 20, give me, what's the last version now? I think it's toward, somewhere towards the end. 29. 29? Give me like 25. Should be somewhere towards the end. 22? I'm missing. This is uh, Numbers chapter 20, verse 22. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came unto Mount Or. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Or by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. But he shall not enter the, enter the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Right? Don't nobody get by. Nobody gets a pass. Right? Nobody gets a pass. Aaron was doing the work of the Most High God. He is the high priest. He can't have leprosy. Right? He can't even be seen. But who's going to tell him he got it? Right? He's the high priest. The Most High God, he's like, yeah, that's why he kept That's why he kept him when he, when he, uh, he uh, laid down the, uh, uh, when he made the golden calf also. also. The most high God kept him just because uh, he's the high priest, right? All right you, you all right for right now, but I'm going to get you. Don't worry, all that stuff going to catch up to you. All that stuff caught up. Right? Ain't no, it's no way around the word. No way around. You can look at it and try to think, oh, God, that's just the grace of the most high God. Right? Nothing changed. He, got, he had grace back then, and he's and he, and he rough now. Right? They try to tell us it's all grace now and there was no grace back then. It's a lie. We looking at his grace. Right? We look at it. Go to uh, Hosea. Yep. Who, Eliezer? Yeah. It's Hosea chapter 1. Let me try to learn about God today. These people just don't see this side of God. They don't look at it, can't even fathom. I mean, you can read it to them, and they, it'll just confuse. They'll be looking like, no, that can't be. Right? Because they're so busy latching on to the stuff, that the, the foolishness and the weakness that we've been taught. Nothing about the character of God. So we'll mess around and believe anything. Yeah, people that reject, I could, that criticize me, I could never, never, ever believe in a God that tells me I should... Uh, that tells me I should kill anybody. Or tells it that, that commands anybody to kill. God should be a loving God. Well, you, ain't, you ain't read about the Canaanites, huh? You don't know nothing about our God. All right? You ain't read about in Revelation what, what's going to happen, huh? You have no idea about our God. You know, no idea who we serve. It's Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, mm -hmm. king of Judah. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. First thing, right? You're a prophet now, son. Go get you a wife of whoredoms. All right? I mean, that's the first thing. This is, what, this is our God. Right? He tells them to go marry a, a, a woman who's a whore. Right? That's what he tells them to do. He commands them to just for the just to get his point across. He needed them. Right? I use you for what I need to use you for. That's me. Right? It's mine. He said, all this stuff is mine. Right? Just do what I told you to do. What do you think old is gonna say? No, I'm not marrying a whore, Lord. Oh please. Better get your butt over there and do it. Right? That's the grace of God to give you the ability to do something for his purpose. Something good, right? To let him use you as a similitude, as a likeness, right? For something that he's going to do for our people, right? Look at, uh, look at uh, Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1. I ain't, yeah, I wasn't even going to get that one. It's Isaiah. I'm sorry, uh, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1.
It's Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. Mm -hmm. So this is Jeremiah. He's like, man, you righteous now when I plead with you. But you know what I'm saying? Let me just talk to you a little bit about the things that you letting happen now. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Wherefore does the way of the wicked prosper? And he said, now, it seems like these evil people are doing pretty darn good, right? He said, why? He said, why, why are the way of the wicked, why, why they get to prosper, right? Why they get to do what it seems like they want to do, All right? Let's see. Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? He said, these people that be lying and stealing and cheating, he said, they all seem so happy. All of them seem so happy. The same, the same complaints and gripes we have now, right? Keep going. Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near their mouth and far from their reins. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried mine heart towards thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. He said, get them, God. You know what I'm saying? He said, you know we're near their reins, but you're near their mouth. That's, that means you feed them like a horse. You got the reins of the horse. That's where you control it and make the horse do what you want to do. He said, you're not making them do what you want them to do. You know what I'm saying? But you around their mouth and you feeding them. He said, you near their mouth, but you ain't got their reins. He said, man, pull them up. Get them, God. Right? This is Jeremiah, right? Watch this. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field with it? Mm -hmm. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Mm -hmm. The beasts are consumed in the birds because they have said, you shall not see our last end. Mm -hmm. Watch how God responds. If thou hast run with the footmen. This is God speaking now, right? He said, if thou have run with what? With the footmen. Mm -hmm. And they have wearied thee. Mm -hmm. Then how canst thou contend with the horses? Right. The only thing he got to say back to, to Jeremiah is, okay, so let me ask you a question. <laughs> right? He said all that. But if you just running with human beings, right? Just I mean, human beings just like you. And you get tired of that. You definitely ain't ready for what's coming next when you got to run with the horses. That's it. Right? What do you say next? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? He said, this is your own land. You know what I'm saying? You trust your land. You know these people. You know what I'm saying? They, they got you weary. How you going to go to the people that you don't know, that you don't trust, that don't mess with you, that'll kill you in a second? Right? He said, I mean, just, I mean, let's think about that. Don't answer his questions. He did. I mean, Jeremiah asked some legitimate questions. Like, why in the world does the wicked prosper? When the, you don't think, well, no, see, let me explain to you. He, said, he, he didn't answer no question. He just say, if you think this is tough, you're not ready for what's coming next. Period. Right? This is our God. This is how he deals with us. Let's go to, uh, we don't have to grab Ezekiel. But we know Ezekiel's wife died, right? We know it's just... Just for a testimony, just to show the people what he is talking about. Told them right? Told them, don't cry. Right? Don't you mourn. It. Right? That's how I mean. That, that's our God. Go to Acts, though. Let's give him some New Testament. This is Acts chapter 5. Bless you. This is Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession mm -hmm. and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? Uh-oh. So he saw, well, so what happened was they sold. So everybody, this is what everybody was doing. Everybody was selling their goods. We could probably get it in uh, chapter 4. But everybody was selling their goods, everything that they had, and then they would turn it in to Peter, right? And then everybody would share everything, right? So you take all the money that you had, go sell your house, go sell all your property, and then take the money and you'll give it to uh, Peter. Then after you do that, then everything would distribute it to everybody where everybody can enjoy, you know what I'm saying, everyone's good, right? It's like, okay, well, we got enough money to get you a house, get you a house, get you a house, get you a house. To make sure everybody was taken care of. So everybody who had a lot would give it. And then everybody who had a little would be able to share. Right? Communism is what they would call it nowadays. Right? So it's just everything was in communion. Everything was in common. Right? And so, um, so Ananias and his wife, what they ended up doing is they said, okay, we're going to sell our house. 
but we're not going to give all the money, right? So what's going to happen? It's just like welfare, right? I'm putting all my money into the system, right? Then money, my, our money or the share of money is going to come back, right? So what they did is they said, well, we're going to keep some of the profit from our house, right? They didn't put all of it in. They're going to keep some of the profit. So now when the money come back from Peter and from, from the congregation, they still got some money tucked away too. So that's unfair to everybody, right? If you're going to do it, then do it. If you're not going to do it, just don't, right? And that's what Peter about to tell them. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Mm -hmm. While it remains, was it not thine own? No, he said it was yours, right? He's like, why have remained? It was yours. It was your money. You know what I'm saying? Why you got to lie about it? Just say you didn't want to do it. It's your money. Right? But don't pretend and put it up there. No, this no, that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? A whole pot. No, nah, that's how much we bought it for. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, God blessed us. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, God blessed. Go ahead, put that in the gun. Go ahead. Well, you know, you know, when the Lord moved me, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's just making a fool out of them. So let's see what happens. And after let's see how let's see how, how gracious our God is. How forgiving and loving he is. Don't matter what you do. All right, let's see. It, what test? I mean, what testament are we in right now? You sure this ain't Jeremiah chapter seven or something? No, this thing acts. This thing come right after uh, John. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Mm -hmm. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. He said, "You lied to God. You know that the Most High God is close to what we doing. You lied to Him. Why?" Let's see. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and a great fear came on all them that heard these things. Tell me I ain't a just God. You want to know where the grace is in this? God knew he lied at the moment that he did it. Right? The moment that he and his wife sat down and talked about it, he knew they lied then. He could have killed them right then. But he waited until they followed through and completed the entire act. He said, all right, you did it. You done. All right, he's going to get a wife the same chance. Let's look. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Mm -hmm. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answering unto her, tell me where you sold the land for so much. Right, he said, so your, your husband brought in, you know what I'm saying, he thought brought in 3,000 up in here. You know what I'm saying, Did you, you sold the land for 3,000? All right, so she's going to respond. And she said, yay, for so much. Yeah, yeah, 3,000, yeah, I mean... Let me tell you, we didn't think we were going to get that much for it. I mean, it's just, a, it's just an old raggedy piece of land, but the Lord blessed us. And, and the only thing we want to do is give it to the congregation. I mean, we just, I know there's a lot of people out there that need it. We're giving it all to you, all 30000 Praise the Lord. Don't worry about it. No, no, don't worry. I mean, you just give us back what we need. Meanwhile, she got another 20000 tucked away. She don't know her husband just died for the same lie. Right? Keep going. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Right? That's God. That's the gracious, loving, forgiving God that he is. Got rid of both of them. Because they're liars. And he gave them a chance to tell the truth. Both of them he gave them a chance to tell the truth. And they decided to lie about it. This is our God. There's no way in the world God is going to be so, so close to what we're doing and you think that things like this wouldn't happen. Just like the mo when the Most High God show up back here, I can guarantee you anybody that act up is getting done away with. Right? That's why in Ezekiel chapter 20, we're going to be separated in the wilderness. Right? Because the Most High God is going to be, end up being close to what we're doing. Right now, Most High God ain't speaking. You, you can listen to these people talking, talking about their prophets and stuff. Chances are the Most High God ain't speaking to these people. Because if he is speaking to him, things would be happening. He have to. Right? That's the same, same reason why, why uh, uh, Miriam and, um, Miriam and Aaron, Aaron got punished the way they did. Because the Most High God was right there speaking. Right? You had direct communication through Moses with the Most High God. So now if you disobey, you think it's just going to be, you know what I'm saying, nothing going to happen? No. Since he's close to the situation, he has to get you. It's by the grace of God that he moves himself back and he doesn't speak to us right now. Right? That the communication is shut, just like according to the prophet, he said it would be dark days, right? It would be a famine in the word of the God, word of God. Not talking about the written word, talking about the prophecy. 
Right? Because if he if it wasn't a famine or anything, then if he is close to it, you can best believe people would be dropping dead. The punishment would have to be more strict because he's right there on top of us. All right? He had to pull himself back like, man, y'all make a mess. I mess around, I have to get rid of all y'all. That's why he couldn't keep on talking at the mouth. He's out mess around and kill every one of y'all. Every one of y'all. Because we're disobedient people. We've always been. All we need to do is straighten up and put our heart and soul into obeying this word. All this other stuff is frivolous that we got going on in our mind. All this other stuff that, 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 that Satan tempts us with and try to distract us, all that stuff is frivolous. All this stuff, all we need to do is just buckle down and obey this word. That's all he's asking us for. All right? All he's asking us for. Not just here, not just looking good. All time. Just for the rest of our life. Make it a habit. All right? And it'll be better, better for us. It'll be good for us. All right? It's the chance that he's given. It's the grace of God that we got this chance. All right? Go to, uh, let's finish off Moses. That's where we really supposed to be. I was just trying to say, you know, these people got to know who God is, though. You'll never understand what happened to Moses if you don't understand who God is. This stuff won't make sense to you. Why didn't I just feel like God should have let him, let him see the land? No, please. You don't know God. He told him what he was going to let him do. You can see it, boy. He better not touch you. And don't you ask me no more. You better not ask like a little kid. You ask, but can, please, can I go to the store? Can I get something? You better not ask no more. Now, he told Moses, you better, you better not ask. And he, and, and he said Moses was faithful in all this house. Right? It's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1. When Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over, that is over Jer against Jericho, mm -hmm. the Lord answered him, All the land of Gilead, uh, and the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, mm -hmm. and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and, Ma and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, mm -hmm. in the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land of which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. So, mm -hmm. I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over to it. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab over Who against buried the him? The Lord did. Right? Who buried him? God. He said he buried him. Moses, I got killed him. And he buried him. And where he buried him? In Moab. Didn't even get to get carried off into the land. And look how he made sure of it. Keep going. Over this dead field, but no man knoweth of his sepulcher until this day. <laughs> All right? He said, right, y'all ain't even going to know what I did with his body because y'all might try to carry him into the land. What did I tell you, boy? You're not going. He said, don't even ask. And they don't even know what happened to his body. Go to Jude. Joseph got to go. Joseph walked right in that thing. <laughs> he, got he got right in that thing. <laughs> Be Joseph got buried and his stuff got carried where it was supposed to go. Uh, go to Jude. I don't know what verse I want. Yeah. I want to guess seven though. No, nah. go ahead and start me at seven. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. This is Jude seven. Jude verse seven. It's only one chapter in Jude. So this is Jude verse seven. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are, flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire mm -hmm. likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignity mm -hmm. yet michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of moses he did what disputed about the body of moses he disputed about the body of moses because nobody knew where he was buried. Right? Nobody knew where that man was. So you have Elijah who got taken up. Nobody knew where he is. And then you also got Moses. He died, but nobody knew where his body was. Right? And then you got these same two men 
who stand next to Yahushua. Right? It was promised to Moses, oh, and he shall see. Right? He shall see the similitude of the Lord. Yahushua tell us in the, I think it's the 17th chapter. Let's see if we can find it. It's John chapter 17, uh, about verse 20, maybe. It's John chapter 17, verse 20. That probably ain't right though, but is that before or after what I want? Hopefully it's before. A seventeen? Um give me sixteen. Verse twenty. What's the last verse? What's the, what's the number of it? 33. Give me, uh, yeah, give me 22. No, verse 22. Scan it real quick and look for, uh, where you, uh, speak to Philip. What's the last verse of 17? What does it say? How does it start? Definitely not 17. 17 is a prayer. Got to be 16 then. 14? 14? That's right, because it's out there, you ask me, it's out there, you tell me, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yep, that's right. It's 14, chapter 8. John, chapter 14, verse 8. But I meant to say. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Mm -hmm. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Right. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Right, so Moses... Moses got to see the similitude of the Lord because he saw Yahushua, right? And that was the promise that, that, that the Most High God said. He said, oh, he shall see. He spoke to, to Miriam and Aaron. He said, oh, he shall see the similitude of the Lord. All right, so these are how these things play out. All right, we're going to look at, we, we, we should have gotten to more today, but we kind of went off, you know what I'm saying? We had to, had to learn about the character of God a little bit, all right? But we're going to look at next week how, how, how all these things we've been learning about Moses and Elijah have implication in the last days, right? And we want to try to uh, figure out how that's going to play out and see what we can glean and understand, or maybe even some possibilities, right? Man, that's, that's really when we get to talking about the last days, that's really all you're looking at is possibilities, right? You can look at the facts of what it actually says, and then you can speculate on how things may play out. So that's what we'll be doing. And when you get to talking about the last days, or none of them, in fact, God will make a fool out of you, you can start talking about the facts, right? You just kind of got to kind of use what's in the word and kind of look at look at what could possibly happen. All right. And then and then hopefully it uh, it'll help us focus on the expectation and, and understand how things are going to play out and how the most high God is going to come back here and rescue us. All right. Any questions? All right. Well, let's pray out.